I completely transformed this thrifted lampshade into the most beautiful home decor. I removed the shade so it was just the wire frame. I used a utility knife to scrape off the glue. Then I sanded the wire frame with sandpaper and steel wool. I wiped clean and then spray painted it matte black. While it was drying, I sanded a wood round, wiped it clean, and sealed it with gloss spray varathane. I applied five coats and then sprayed the last coat with satin varathane. I pre-drilled and screwed the wire frame and wood round together Time to run down to your local baker and grab a big old container of cookies. But even though those cookies are yummy, what we want is that decorative lid. We're going to measure it straight across and get about 10 inches. Lay out some cardboard and we're going to pick a bowl that's round for us to mark. Just go ahead and lay it on the cardboard and take a marking pen and get you that perfect circle. Now it's time to mix up our cement. Once we get it mixed, carefully lay it inside the bucket. You can see the consistency here is like some really good pudding. Now, once you get the right amount in, you're gonna go ahead and just shake it all up. Cut some strips of wood. This one is gonna be full 10 inches across and the other ones are gonna be four each. And then glue up the ends, lay it out and fold it in. We wanna make sure that all the pieces of the wood fit inside the circle. Take some popsicle sticks and some hot glue. You're gonna lay this across the top. This is going to be our clamp that is going to hold the pieces together while that wood glues dries. Flip it over. We're going to do the other side also. Once you get these pieces on, it's so strong, it's time to go ahead and drill them because we want to put these caster legs on there. All we need to do is take some hot glue, put it in, and all four wheels go right in there. Now it's time to take those wood and the wheels and we're gonna just shake it back and forth, and let it sink right into the concrete. Let it dry for about 24 hours. Go ahead and turn it back over after that 24 hours is up. We're gonna use a knife and we're gonna start cutting away the plastic. We need to get some air in there. That's what's gonna release our mold from the concrete. Look at that smooth, beautiful concrete. Today's project is going to require some clothespins and a small bucket. The clothespins are easy to take apart. All we have to do is use some hot glue. We're going to do that with multiple amounts all the way around. Now on the bottom, I'm going to grab some rope from Dollar Tree, put a little bit of hot glue, push it in place. Just keep going all the way around. Now it comes time for stain. Next we need a wood or plastic hanger. I took a square, put it against the inside edge and mark 90 degrees. We're actually gonna cut on this line. Once we do that, turn your bucket over and then we're gonna hot glue our legs on. If we do four of these across from each other, it makes it nice and steady and stable. Put one of those last bits of rope that I have on there, bring it around to the front and I'm gonna tie a knot on it. I'm gonna grab this trash can, take the top off, we'll use that later, and I'm also going to grab a rubber stair tread. Now I'm gonna use a really strong adhesive to attach the stair tread or the doormat around the trash can. This is gonna to need to set to dry for about 24 hours. So I'm using clamps and some twine to hold everything in place. Now that everything is dry, I can remove the clamps and the rope. I wanna make this look a little bit antique, so I am using a silver rub and buff. I am gonna put some drainage holes in this and I am going to use a wood burning tool. I can flip the lid upside down and place it in the top of the trash can. And now I can fill the top with soil and plants. I scooped up this metal filing cabinet from Facebook Marketplace. I took it out of my van and I put it up on some raised ladders and I removed all the drawers. Then I'm going to come in with this rust paint that is and I'm going to paint the entire filing cabinet. Then I'm going to use my drill and I'm going to drill in some holes in the bottom. To weight it down, I'm going to be putting in two bags of pea stone gravel. Then I'm going to go to my yard and I collected all these old leaves. This is great because I'm going to fill up the bulk of the cabinet with the leaves. So I fill it up till there's about a quarter left at the top and then I fill that last quarter with my potting mix. Then I'm gonna go ahead and plant in my flowers. Grab tin cans and a napkin for this brilliant porch decor. I washed three tin cans from the recycling, removed the labels and scuffed up the surface with a wire brush. I wiped clean with a cloth and spray painted the outside of each can with Rust-Oleum paint and primer white spray paint. While that was drying, I spray painted some metal chain black. I set that aside to dry. I used a small drill bit to drill three holes evenly spaced along the top edge of the tin can. 
I drilled holes in the same spots at the bottom edge and the same spots again at the very bottom of the tin can. Then I cut the napkins into smaller pieces and cut around the birds. I painted outdoor Mod Podge on the tin can, placed the napkin pieces on, and sealed it with more Mod Podge. I did this for all three tin cans, then used a nail to poke through the holes I drilled to make sure the glue didn't close them over. I let the cans dry, 24 hours is ideal. Look for flowers in a multi-pack that can be split apart. Take your laundry basket and drill several holes in the bottom with a drill. Line the laundry basket with a burlap bag or burlap fabric. Start to fill the burlap lined laundry basket with potting soil. Fill to about an inch from the top of the basket. Cut the excess burlap from the top of the basket with some scissors. Starting with the second row of side basket holes, cut the plastic between two holes to create one larger hole. Then cut out the burlap from that larger hole to access the dirt. Take one of your plants and plant it in the hole by pushing it into the dirt behind it. It helps to use your other hand to grab the plant as it comes through the hole and press dirt down around it on the inside of the basket. Once you have the sides of your basket planted, you can plant the top. First, you need to wet your lampshade thoroughly with some water. We mix together two cups of water, four drops of dishwashing soap, and four cups of cement. I then painted this mixture on the wet lampshade and let it dry completely. Now, it's time to make a cement base for the pot. After letting the cement fully dry and cure, we then used a drill to drill in the drainage hole. I added some potting soil. I ran over to my local Home Depot and grabbed some planters right off the shelf and also grabbed some primer and some textured finish. So we're going to put some glue here right around the edges. We're going to bind this pot right here on top of this base. So we're going to put some weight on this. So clean it all up. For the second part of this, we're going to take this waterproof container right here, flip it over. We're going to use the second part of our pot. Let's give this about 30 minutes and then we'll combine the two. Just let that set up and I want to put on a good coat of primer first and then we're going to get to our textured paint. To get started, we are going to be using spackling. So I'm just taking a simple spackling knife. We are going to spread it on all over the pot. What we're going to do next is we're going to do like a stamping technique using chicken wires. You want to just kind of press it in all over and then we're going to remove it and you can see here where it's just going to give it a little bit of almost like a beehive look to it. So we're going to go ahead and let them dry. I'm using an indoor outdoor um, spray paint by Rust-Oleum and this color is heirloom white. So now that we have both coats of the spray paint dry, I'm gonna go in and I wanna add some of this multicolor texture by Rust-Oleum. 